Hello friends and welcome to Bible Time with Pastor Zach. My name is Zach Landis. I'm the pastor of the First United Methodist Church in Howe, Texas. I want to welcome you to this time that we are going to be spending in the Bible today. I want to encourage you to have your Bible handy. Uh, if you have it with you, um, also have some pens or something. I like to mark up my Bible and, and to, uh, to underline things, especially things that I want to kind of remember and, and to be able to see when I go back and, and read through uh, Scripture on my own. Uh, but if you don't, uh, I'm going to have the words of the of what I'm reading uh, come over across the screen. And just in case you want to know, that's the CEB, the Common English Bible. Uh, that's the translation uh, for this week. But right now what we've been doing uh, in Bible Time with Pastor Zach is we've been reading through the Gospel of Matthew. We are going one chapter per week, not covering every single verse, but doing some of the overarching um, themes and also looking at some of the key pieces each week. Uh, this week we're in chapter 22, so we're uh, kind of nearing the close of the gospel. We still got a few chapters left. We're in the passion narrative of of Matthew. Um, we're in a holy week, and so chapter 22 begins kind of with what we think would have happened roughly on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday maybe Wednesday of Holy Week, and so this is the week between Palm Sunday, which we saw at the beginning of last, uh, the the last chapter when Jesus. Tri triumphantly enters into the city of Jerusalem and then also Easter Sunday, which is the last you know week of his life, the week that we call holy. And so that's kind of where we are. So I want to invite you uh, to open up to Matthew chapter 22. Uh, this first passage uh, at the beginning, uh, this is uh, verses 1 through 22. This is the parable of the wedding party. And we're going to read through this as part of uh, one of the parts that we're actually going to read through. And so here is chapter 22, verses 1 through 22, and it's the parable of the wedding party. Jesus responded by speaking again in parables. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding party for his son. He sent his servants to call those invited to the wedding party, but they didn't want to come. Again, he sent other servants and said to them, Tell those who have been invited, Look, the meal is all prepared. I've butchered the oxen and the fatted calf. Now everything's ready. Come to the wedding party. But they paid no attention and went away, some to their fields, other to their businesses. The rest of them grabbed his servant, abused them, and killed them. The king was angry. He sent his soldiers to destroy those uh, murderers and sent, set their city on fire. Then he said to, to his servants, the wedding party is prepared, but those who were invited weren't worthy. Therefore, go into the roads, go to the roads on the edge of town and invite everyone you find to the wedding party. Then those servants went to the roads and gathered everyone they found, both evil and good. The wedding party was full of guests. Now, when the king came in and saw the guest, he spotted a man who wasn't wearing wedding clothes. He said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? But he was speechless. Then the king said to his servants, Tie his hands and feet and throw him out into the eternal or into the farthest darkness. People there will be weeping and grinding their teeth. Many people are invited, but few people are chosen. And so this is a parable that he's directly kind of uh, addressing the chief people the chief priests, excuse me, and the Pharisees. Um, and so, as we know, he's kind of come into Jerusalem and he's he's directly addressing them and they're asking him questions and he's answering them and, and he, he's kind of having this battle where they're trying to trip him up, basically, and trap him. And, and he tells this parable to kind of... Um, kind of lay the foundation of where they have been relationship-wise between God and the people of Israel. And so God, of course, we can be interpreted as being the uh, person who, the king who is throwing this wedding party for his son, and, and he, he has invited guests, which are the people of Israel, who God first wanted to come to and, and, and bring, and who Jesus' first attempt of ministry was to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. So these are the invited guests. Um, and he sent servants, he sent people who worked for him as emissaries. Uh, and we know that those were the prophets, the people who God sent uh, to try to bring the people of Israel back, you know, into a relation, into right relationship with him. And they ignored them, right? And so it, it, it's, it's, you know, kind of um, describing that relationship of how 
The people of Israel either ignored the prophets, how they didn't listen to them, how how they either listened to them and then turned away, or in in several of the cases actually killed them, uh, killed the prophets. And so that's what it's kind of showing, and it's also foreshadowing what they're going to do to Jesus. You know, they're they're about to kill Jesus. They're about to kill not uh, not just our you know our King, but the King God's own Son, right? So there's a little bit of foreshadowing, but it's also kind of a parable showing that relationship. And 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 once they said no to the party, God then go or or the King goes out and says, "Go well, just go bring everybody." And that's um, kind of what we understand that. Once they're in the party, they also realize that uh, the king realizes that there's somebody out there that's not living fruitfully, right? That doesn't have wedding garments on, that it, that isn't marked as God's own, and gets thrown out of the party. And that shows us that um, that even though um, we get invited, right? Even though we can accept it, we actually have to uh, accept it by also living. Uh, purposefully and faithfully. We just can't say we're going to come. We can't get into the wedding party without actually living um, the way that we're supposed to live, live the way that God wants us to live. And so that's kind of what this parable kind of teaches us as we begin uh, chapter 22 and basically Tuesday of Holy Week. Now the next part, the rest of this chapter, there's four questions. There's four questions where either it's the chief priests or the Pharisees or there's one where the uh, Sadducees are asking Jesus um, questions. They're trying to get him to trip up and to, uh, so that they can have some things to, to, or some charges to bring against him. So the first question, we're just going to quickly go over these things. If you want to read them in greater detail, I encourage you to do that on your own. Uh, but the first one is a question about taxes. And so this is verses 15 through 22. And so... Um, That is where they're talking about taxes, where paying taxes. And so the Pharisees are coming to Jesus to trap him. And it even says that in Scripture. Um, And they're asking, does the law allow us to pay taxes to Caesar? Um, Then, of course, he responds, you know, telling them that they're hypocrites. He tells them to hold up the coin, right? So whose picture is on it? And they said, well, it's Caesar's, right? You know, what they're referencing is the head tax that um, that Roman would charge all adults, that there was a head tax that you had to pay if you were an adult living in the Roman Empire. And so they're wanting to see if Jesus would speak against the Roman Empire. They believe their Messiah, this king that was supposed to come in, was supposed to come in and wipe out the Romans, right? That's what they interpreted it to, to be. And they were seeing if Jesus was going to start that, start that trouble, start that rebellion right here, or at least get them a way that where he could get the, him in trouble with the Romans, right? Now, the next question, this is uh, verses 23 through 33. This is um, the question about resurrection. So this is the Sadducees. And so the first group, we had the Pharisees. This, we have the Sadducees. Um, these were a group of people who were kind of religious leaders. They were the priestly aristocrats. They were the people in charge of the temple worship. And so uh, we know the Pharisees were kind of like the legal experts. They were the ones that um, you know made sure people were following the law, the Torah. And the Sadducees were people who were uh, kind of in the priestly class, and they were in charge of the temple and all that happened in there. So like the temple uh, sacrificial system was all the Pharisees and stuff like that. Uh, they also didn't believe in the bodily resurrection. So they didn't believe that when you died, your, your body was, um, you know, you were, was resurrected, right? And so they had this question. They're, again, trying to trip Jesus up. Um, and basically, it was kind of a, a, a complicated question where they were saying, it's like, well, um, well, who would you be married to, right? If you had been married to a few other people, like, well, who's your wife in heaven? And, and Jesus says, it's not even like that. Heaven's completely different from what anything this world has to offer. So even even our worldly definitions and ideas of marriage are different in heaven. And, and he just his teaching leaves them astonished, and they, and they go away. Then the third question is again the Pharisees, uh, having heard that he left the Sadducees speechless with uh, his teaching, come come and ask. Well, they try first try to get him in trouble with the Romans. Right now they're trying to get him in trouble with their own law, the own, their own Jewish law. And they say, well, pick one of the commandments uh, in the Bible, because we know there's a lot of them. There's over 600 commandments that say, which one is the greatest? 
and the commandment of the law. So they already knew kind of the hierarchy. They knew which ones were the major things, like the Ten Commandments and those most important ones. And then there's also some smaller ones, right, that weren't uh, significant. But Jesus was tr they're trying to trip him up again. And they ask him, what's the greatest in all of the law? And of course, we know that Jesus replied that you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind. And he says the second one's like this. You must love your neighbor as yourself. So he gives us the two most important commandments. He said, what's the greatest? And he gives us two. And he said, all of the other laws, all the other prophets hang off of these two. These are the two most important things. And so while they were trying to trip him up to see what he would say, he actually pulls out the, the most important ones. And they, they are foundational for us as Christians, that everything that we believe, all that we interpret, uh, everything that Jesus taught us, everything that the Old Testament has to say, all has to come through those lens of those two commandments about loving God and loving our neighbor as ourself. And then the final question actually doesn't come from uh, the Pharisees. And he says, it says, while the Pharisees were gathering, Jesus asked them a question. So as they asked him three questions, Jesus ends this chapter, ends this little time about asking them a question. And he asked them, who do you think the Christ is? Whose son is he? And they said, David's son. And then Jesus said, then how is it that David, inspired by the Holy Spirit, called him Lord when he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right side until I turn your enemies into your footstools. If David calls him Lord, how can be how can he be David's son? And then I like how it answers how nobody was able to answer him, right? And so while they were coming trying to trip up Jesus, trying to get him to say something wrong or to get him to where he couldn't answer anything, what Jesus does is at the very end he asks them a question, right? And then he kind of he quotes some scripture too and leaves them unable to answer anything. And so what I love how this, this is the very last verse. Uh, this is 46. It says, nobody was able to answer him. And from that day forward, nobody dared to ask him anything. That's, uh, you know, so Jesus kind of shuts down their questions, shuts down those traps that they're trying to lay for him. And because of, of how he is astonishing them, right, with his answers. And actually, in each one of these questions, he says uh, they were astonished and then they departed, right? And they were astonished by his teaching. So if you look at the line of each, the last line of each of those, each the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and then the Pharisees again are all being astonished by what Jesus is saying. And then at the end, um, basically of this part of this chapter, they basically go, oh, well, he got us, right? They were trying to get him, and Jesus, in turn, got them and, and basically shut down these questions uh, from the Pharisees. And so that's kind of where we are. We're going to continue on with chapter 23 next week. I uh, encourage you to read those little passages um, about those questions if you want to go further or deeper into them. But that's kind of all we're going to cover this week. Um, and, and reminding that we're kind of going through Holy Week. I know it's a strange time of the year, uh, nearing Christmas and Advent to be going through Holy Week, but you know we're just going to keep going through here um, for Bible time because I'm also having my other Bible study on Advent stuff uh, at the church. And so thank you so much for joining with me for Bible time with Pastor Zach. Uh, please like this video on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, it helps the algorithm and all that get out to more people, show up in more people's news feeds. Uh, but I hope to see you next time and have a happy uh, and great Thanksgiving week. Uh, have a great day. Goodbye.